everyone. My name is Molly Giannis and I am a member of Echo Consulting. We're a project management solutions firm and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Smartsheet and some of the tools that we use with our clients and our team to really keep everyone action oriented. So one of the major complaints and pain points that we hear a lot is that there's too many meetings and like what is actually accomplished in meetings. Similarly, we have project plans that have risk logs and issue logs and action items and changes and and organizations are looking for the right size solution not something that's like super heavy super difficult um, a lot of time and effort right but also not a situation where you come out of a meeting and then like what happened you don't ever look at the notes again until the next meeting and that's only if there are notes so one of the things that our team has started to use um, is something that we call a crate log and so a CRAID log is, you might have heard of a RAID log. A RAID log is risks, issues, action items, decisions. Um, but one of our brilliant clients said, okay, well, what about changes? Like, can we add changes to it too? Um, and they're like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, changes make sense. Like usually change requests and logs have to go somewhere else because there's a review and approval process. But for this organization, they're not quite there yet maturity wise. And so they've added everything into one. So, and it's called a CRAID log. So let me show you an example of our CRAID log and we'll talk a little bit about how it's used in like a meeting format, okay? So I'm gonna look at our CRAID log template. This is an echo template that we created, but anyone can create this in Smartsheet. I'm going to save as new and create a new copy that I can play around with for you guys. And I'm going to put this in um, sheets for right now, just so that no one gets confused by my draft. All right, so I just saved as new, easy peasy. I've got a blank crate log. So what is in a crate log? So the first thing is you'll notice that I have a description, right? So if I think about this, I'm in a meeting and someone's talking about it and there's an action that I have to take. So what's the action I'm going to have to take? Um, I need to set up a new meeting with, um, with leadership on, you know, whatever this is, right? So what is this? This is setting up a meeting. I'm going to say that this is an action item and who's it assigned to? Who's owning that action? I'm owning that action. Okay. But during this meeting, we also identified that there's a risk, right? So one of the risks is that senior leaders leaders are not bought in, are not bought in to the Smartsheet solution. Okay, and so this is a risk and someone is managing that risk and it's going to be Barb, probably the sponsor. And Barb needs to, and the action item needs to get done by the end of this week. <clears throat> the risk is a risk that's going to be ongoing for a little while. So we would anticipate that we need, really need to have it done before the next quarterly meeting with the client, with the um, team. So we're going to go ahead and say that um, this is a risk. And one of the things we're going to think about in this meeting or maybe in a follow up is what are some of the mitigation strategies? So senior leaders are not bought into the solution. So one potential idea would be to um, provide a demo of the proof of concept and have Barb meet one on one before next leadership call, right? Okay, so that's one mitigation path. But what other, what's another one, right? Like maybe we think of another one and we're thinking like, oh, uh, maybe we could do, 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 do um, uh, uh, provide an updated business case with ROI calculation and um, updated uh, project plan. I don't know, right? So I'm trying to think of some of these different things. Now, what am I doing here? I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I'm just gonna mark this down like this so that I, I can see everything, okay? So that's all great and good. This is wonderful. So now I have a risk that I'm tracking. Um, there's an open decision, like who is the pilot team gonna be? Right? We know that we are going to do a pilot of Smartsheet, but who is the pilot department? Is it going to be the marketing team or the IT team? So who is the pilot department? Is it um, marketing or finance? Okay, well, that's a decision. And who is responsible for that decision, right? So is it Barb or maybe it's Kelly? I'm not sure. So we're going to try to say Kelly 
and maybe we need to ping Barb on this as well. This is a really high priority because this is going to block us by the end of this week. So I'm actually going to mark this as high and I'm going to escalate this to make sure that it shows up on their team's um, uh, crate log or their team's view. Make sense? Um, and so this one is going to be open. I'm actually going to mark all of these as open, I think. Um, and that's a good job, but this is actually going to be on hold because we need to wait for bar. We need for um, wait to barb on this on this decision before we kind of set up a new meeting or something along those lines. Okay. Now, um, you can kind of get where I'm going. So, like, what is the purpose of a meeting? So often I see these meeting notes if they're even taken, and the meeting notes are all like, "Oh, we talked about this. We talked about this. We talked about this." Okay, great. You talked about those. But what was the point of the meeting? Like, what are the action items that came out to, and who are they assigned to? What are the risks that we've identified? Let's not just like complain and just think about all the things that are difficult and all the gray areas and everything like that, but encourage your team to actually articulate what are the risks that they're seeing or the issues that they're seeing um, and keeping track of them, right? So it's like, hey, this is a risk. The senior leaders are not bought in. What are our options? Like pushing our teams to really talk about, okay, so this is a risk. We know it's happening. A lot of people are mentioning it. So what next? What are we going to do about it, right? And that's where that mitigation planning comes in for risk management. What I love about the Crade Log template is that it's a one-stop shop and oftentimes it's not per meeting, like it's per department or it's per program or per project, or maybe there's a reoccurring operations meeting and you use this for it. But it's an, it's an ongoing log of what's been taken, you know, who the action items are for, what the risks are, what the decisions are. And then once you have this crate log, right, you can pull reports across multiple different crate logs for different departments. And then you can escalate things and say, okay, these are the things that senior leadership needs to do. All right, so what you'll see is that I've added some filters here. What kind of filters would I want in my crate log? Well, the first one is I've actually broken down so that I can see, okay, I only wanna see change requests. I only wanna see decisions, only risks and issues. Maybe I'm only looking at something that's past due. Um, maybe I only wanna see something that's not closed or what's coming up due in the next week so we can just focus on what's due in the next week. Um, so that's the type of thing I want. The other thing would be priority, right? Like I'm looking at something that's either escalated or something that's critical in nature. <clears throat> so I typically have our clients use priority. So like severity, things like that. One of the things when you're doing, um, doing these columns is I recommend um, actually putting the numbers in here. So like this, so it's like one, critical and that helps you if you are grouping things down the road so that they actually go in the order that you want and it's not just alphabetical, right? So I typically, um, well, I typically know how to count. Um, and so that way I'm kind of building in that there. Um, and so here, for example, I would make that high and that just helps me. The other thing I like to do is add a URL reference. So if it is a document that maybe to a SharePoint site or a Google Drive, or maybe it's even a reference to another sheet, project plan, dashboard, et cetera, um, I like to add the, uh, the, the URL reference there. Um, the other thing that's nice, it's just like any other project plan. The reason why I think Crade Log is really useful is you can go ahead and comment, right? And you can say, hey, you know, at Barb, can I, you know, um, were you able, to get on uh, Brian's calendar, right? Or maybe I don't want to tag Brian because he's a COO and I don't want to <laughs> Brian's calendar, right? All right, and that's a way to comment on them, right? Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and post comment. But the other option is, is if I was on here and I was checking in because I'm the manager and I'm trying to prep for the meeting tomorrow for my team, I could send an update request to someone and say, hey, Barb, you know, update my sheet. Now, the way I'm doing it right now is ad hoc, right? Like I'm going ahead and adding um, a update request this way. The other thing that I can do in a workflow in a crate log is actually, um, one, I can record the dates that something is closed, escalated or issue, but I can also send alerts for when someone gets assigned a new crate item or when they need to go ahead and set an update or something like that, right? So alert someone when cr specified cr criteria are met. So like maybe something gets marked as escalated and the project manager or the program manager, whoever's the manager of that department gets notified if they are to mark something as escalated or if something changes to the priority of critical, okay? 
the other thing I like to do is actually um, go ahead and, and define like what is critical, right? So critical um, uh, is blocking project or is blocking team um, and will impact scope um, deliverables, right? OKRs, for example, like there's a lot of different options here, right? High needs resolution this week um, in order to not uh, impact OKRs. Right, again, I'm just making it up as I go, but the concept is there. You can add, you know, what does critical high, et cetera, mean? What does escalated mean to you? So some risk logs have things like impact ratings and probability rankings. So if you think about that, is the impact rating, like is this impact of this of this item, like high, medium, or low, and how probable is that it's gonna happen? Um, and that can kind of provide some mathematical way to prioritize. Did you see that as I was like scrolling across, I wasn't able to see these main columns that are really important to me. So one of the things I like to do is I can actually freeze the column. And that way, if, as I scroll, I can actually still see what the description is and then like who it's assigned to. Okay. So, and then some of these things, these are just record dates that I might want to use later on for like trends and stuff like that. So typically I just hide those columns. All right, so anyways, again, what's the purpose of a CRADE log, right? I'm trying to identify what my actions, change requests, decisions, issues, and risks are. A couple of things to note, when we do create change requests in a CRADE log, um, we typically still have a review or approval process for those. Um, so there's two different ways to do that. The first one is to actually like create the columns here, you know, and have review and reviewer and review date and all that other stuff here. Um, the other thing is to move it to a different uh, sheet that is a change log sheet that has all of that there so that it doesn't kind of clog up this one. So let me just show you an example where I go ahead and move it to a different sheet. So I'm gonna create a workflow and I'm gonna look at my um, workflow options and one of them is gonna be move rows to another sheet, right? So I'm gonna call like move um, to change request sheet. Okay, so when this field becomes, for example, a create type of change request, right, I'm going to move the row and I'm going to select a sheet and I'm just going to make it up as I go, but here we go, right, and I'm just going to move it to another sheet. So if I move it here, I'm going to click that and then I'll see that if I do that, I'm going to go back to my create log. And I'm going to say, OK, you know what? This is actually a change request and I'm going to save this. And it does take a moment or two before something moves, but I'm going to go ahead and um, refresh again. And I think it should be gone by then. So it usually takes about a minute. Oh, not quite yet. There it goes. So like I said, it takes about a minute. So anywho, just an idea. Um, now it's not here. Um, it's just pulling everything else. It's on the change log. And then maybe the change log is anything new there goes through a review and approval process um, there. So if you are more interested about learning the CRADE process and how to implement CRADEs for your organization so that your meetings can be really impactful and that you're capturing your actions, your risk, your issues, your changes, et cetera, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, my name is Molly Giannis and I'm with Echo Consulting and we're a project management solutions firm, but we work with a lot of organizations on operational improvement, business process improvement, all sorts of jazz. Um, we work with Smartsheet. We are a Smartsheet aligned partner, um, but we're also partners with other work management systems like Monday and ClickUp and oh my goodness, I've used hundreds of, not hundreds, but tens of different pro um, work management systems. So. Really, it's a combination of technology and process and people and uh, the success comes between all of those and that's where we like to play. So again, Molly with Echo Consulting, project management solutions firm, and thank you for joining me today.